Today we're going to talk about section 2.6, the last section of chapter 2. We're talking about solving equations. Now, before we have dealt with equations in a little bit, but we have never solved them. So I'm going to give you some nice techniques of solving these. These you are going to carry with you throughout the rest of this course and even throughout every math class you ever take is doing solving equations this way. So if you're keeping track, we're on 2.6. Solving equations. The first thing we need to talk about is what an equation even means. Because most of the time in this class, up till now, we've been dealing with expressions. So when we talk about equations and expressions, there's got to be a difference there. Here's the difference between equations and expressions. There's really only one difference. It, it seems like a minor difference, but it's kind of a big deal for us. Expressions, the things we've been dealing with so far in this class, typically, and equations, are both mathematical constructs. I mean, you, you make both of them with addition, subtraction. You have some numbers up there, variables maybe. But here's the difference between them. Equations have something called an equal sign. They have the equals. Expressions don't. That's the only difference. Other than that, they look very, very similar. So when we talk about an equation, equations have an equal sign. So equations have that equal sign. Expressions don't. Let me give you some examples of, of what we're talking about here. Here's something that we've kind of seen in this class before. Maybe you've distributed and, or I'm sorry, you've, you've combined some like terms or something like that, and you have 4x minus, 4y minus 7. Do you have an equal sign up there? No. So you have a 4y, you have the minus 7, that's great. But if there's no equal sign, the best we can call this is an expression. It's not an equation. Listen carefully. You cannot solve expressions. All you can do is manipulate them. We can't say how much y equals right there. Can you look at that and go, oh, y equals 2? No. Not really, because it's not, it's not equal to anything, right? You can't ever check to see if you're right. All you can do is, we've heard this word before, hope you pay attention, you can evaluate expressions. I could say, can you plug in 3 to that? Could you do that? Yeah. You could evaluate it, no problem. But you can't ever solve it. With equations, we're going to find out that we can solve these things. This is an expression. Another example of an expression would be something like um, negative 8 minus 2x. That's another expression. There's no equal sign. Again, you can't solve that. All you could do is evaluate it if I gave you a number. I would say evaluate this for x equals negative 4. Or evaluate this for y equals 3 in this example. But we can't ever solve those. Now, equations, on the other hand, they're stuff that have, they're those, those expressions, but then they tack on an equal sign and have an equal there. That's an equation. Looks like an expression, right? If I cover that up, if I cover that up, that is an expression. But as soon as we go equals to something, that's an equation. It has the equal sign. And we're going to be able to solve this towards the end of our, our section here. Um, maybe when we get a little bit further than that. But we'll, we'll be able to solve this at some point in this class. So what is the difference between equations and expressions again? What do, what do we have there? One has an equal sign. One That's one. it. That's the only difference between them. Uh, we could even do this. You can have the numbers on the other side. 3 equals x plus 5. We're going to find out that we can solve equations. We can only manipulate and uh, evaluate our expressions. Okay, I just said we can solve equations. Well, what that means is we're going to be able to find a solution. What I want to do is explain again one more time. We've had this once in here. Explain what a solution really is. So when I say solution, when I say solution, what we mean by that is a value that when I plug it into an equation, makes the equation true. A solution is a value that when I plug it into the equation, 
makes a true statement. So we'll say a value that makes an equation true. Let me give you just a couple of examples here. Is negative 2 a solution, I abbreviated there, is negative 2 a solution to 3y plus 1 equals 3? What I'm asking you is if I plug that number in, does it make a true statement? One way we can do that is to evaluate an equation. We say, let's take that negative 2, let's plug it in for our variable. In our case, what is our variable up here, ladies and gentlemen? Y. <coughs> so if I plug that into y, we're going to see if it makes a true statement. So how we do this the first time, we do, does the 3 change? No. no. <coughs> does the y change? Yes. yes. Two parentheses, negative 2. Good, yeah, I like the parentheses because that says I'm multiplying by a negative, I'm not subtracting. Then this plus 1 doesn't change, the equals doesn't change, and the 3 doesn't change. Also, one more thing I like to do when you're checking to see if something is a solution. We, we're not quite sure yet, right? Because we have to do the math on this thing. Put a little question mark up here. Signifying that you're, you're questioning whether this is going to be true or not. And at the end, we're going to make that determination. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. I'm kind of questioning you right now. So let's do the math together. How much is uh, 3 times negative 2? Very good. Notice how we're just using some techniques of order operations on expressions that we did. Now we just have equations. And we're still checking if that's true. How much is negative 6 plus 1? Good. Is that a true statement? Is no. negative 5 equal to 3? No. Then what you do if you check this and it comes out that, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. What we do is put a line through the equal sign saying that's not equal. And then we answer the question. Is negative 2 a solution to this equation? No. The answer is no. definitely not. So we're putting that No. Why don't you try this one on your own? We'll take the same number. Is negative 2 a solution to this equation? So again, take that negative 2, plug that in there and do your order of operations on the left hand side. Is negative 2 a solution to negative 4x minus 3 equals 5? Firstly, do I have an equation or an expression here, ladies and gentlemen? Equation. Equation. Definitely, equation. because it has an equal sign. That way we can check to see if something is a solution. If you have an expression, you can't even answer this question right now. All you'd be able to do is plug it in and evaluate it. That, that's the difference there. So in our case, we say, all right, let's go ahead and take our negative 2. We'll plug it into our variable, which in this case is x. We're going to say the negative 4, does the negative 4 change at all? No. Okay. However, the x becomes negative 2. Now remember that negative 4x means negative 4 times x. So we are multiplying there. And then we're going to have that minus 3. So all I'm doing is replacing x with negative 2 equals 5. How many people plugged it in just like that? Excellent job. Now let's see if our order of operations have paid off. We'll do. Multiplication first, we're going to get how much? Positive. We're questioning this. We're seeing if it's true or not. A minus 3. 
That's the one who's just testing you. You passed. <laughs> and is it true? Yes. yes. Yeah, so we don't have to put the cross the line through it because this is a true statement. We put yes, negative 2 is a solution. It means it makes a true statement out of this. Now, this is all fine and good, right? We, we can tell whether something is a solution or not just by plugging it into our equation and seeing if we have a true statement. But typically, we don't want to always be just checking random numbers, right? We want a way to systematically solve equations so that instead of just checking numbers, we can go straight to here and find the solution to this problem instead of randomly guessing. Are you with me on this? So what we're going to do now is we're almost there. We're going to talk about one property that's going to let us help, help us out with this, and then we're going to start actually solving equations. The one property we have to talk about is the addition property of equality. Here's what it, that sounds really fancy, right? The addition property of equality. It's a really simple statement, and you guys are going to be like, yeah, duh, no kidding. I mean, why, do, why are we doing this? This property, though, lets us solve all your equations. There, there's two properties. This is the first one that lets you solve your equations. And here's basically what it says. How much is 6 plus 8? So you'd say that's a true statement, right? 6 plus 8 equals 14. Is that a true equation for you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Here's what the addition property of equality says. Very simple thing. It says if I add the same number to both sides of my equation, the equation is going to be equal still. The equation is going to be equal. It's very much like a, it's like a balance beam. Uh, the addition property of equality says, or equations in general say, what you do to one side of your equation, you have to do to the other. If you don't, it's like, have you ever seen a teeter-totter? They don't have them very often anymore, but you know what I'm talking about, like the whole teeter-totter? Mm -hmm. Do you know what teeter-totter is? <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing, thing that goes like that. It used to <laughs> go like this. And go. Well, I used to be kind of a fat kid when I was younger, so I swear I was like 160 pounds in sixth grade or something like that. Sure. Yeah, I swear I was really <laughs> short, kind of, and then I just kind of kind of grew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway. Um, if I was on videotape back then, it, the camera would have added like a hundred pounds, like it was, it was big. But anyway, but what, on your teeter-totter, here's how teeter-totters work. You have this sort of plank, right, a very simple teeter-totter. In the middle of this plank, you have a balance point. That's like the symbol for, for an equation. Uh, an equation has to be balanced. And when we get our equations, they are automatically balanced for us. That's certainly balanced, isn't it? We've got 14 here, I've got 14 there. What would happen to a teeter-totter if I put something on this side and I didn't put something on this side? What, what's going to happen? It's going to go down. Yeah, so I'm a I was a big guy back then, and so I would sit on a teeter-totter and all of a sudden it would crash to the ground, right? We'd have to add the same amount of weight on the other side to get it balanced back again. You with me? If we added too much, I'd be up in the air. If we didn't add enough, they'd be up in the air. And that's, that's how your equations work as well. It's very much like a teeter-totter. What we want to do is keep our teeter-totter, our, our balance, level all the time. And the way we do that is if you had, if you had your, your balance beam and you took weight off at the same time, or you put weight on at the same time, equal weights, is that teeter-totter ever going to move? And that's what we want. Because if we keep our teeter-totter not doing this, then our equation is going to be equal all the way down, and we'll end up getting our solution at the end. Does that make sense to you? Okay. That's the idea. So the addition property of equality says basically this. It says, what you do to one side by addition, you must also do to the other side by addition. And if you do that, you will have an equation that is also true. For instance, let me give you some, a, a real life example here. 